Hello, David. Evening, Alex. So this is, I guess, episode two of the Midnight Oil. Could be. Could be. Could be number one. (laughs) Could be number two. Or number three. I think we did number one. Yeah. We think. Is that a dream? Um, Technically, we did it, but, you know, who knows what order we'll release these. (laughs) (laughs) This will be 037.9 episode of the Midnight Hour. Could be. It could just be number two, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we both watched uh, Nespo's new video last week, which I thought we could talk about briefly. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, for those of you listening who don't know Nexpo or Nightmare Expo, he's a pretty popular YouTube channel. Yep. Um... I don't recall a hand, but I think a couple million subscribers. I think he's almost on three. Really? You know, 2.9, something yeah. like that. So he has it, quite a few. His popular videos get easily like three to like five million. Two or three million, videos. right? Yeah. yeah. So he gets the views that match his subscriber numbers, mm-hmm. which is pretty good, I think. Yeah. yeah. So he typically does videos on like kind of like dark or disturbing subject matters mm. or like internet mysteries mm. you know things like that isn't his uh youtube tag like internet explorer or internet detective or something S- like that something yeah. like that yeah. <laughs> yeah and anyway his latest video i believe is titled the like the darkest lost media uh volume two right? volume two yeah yes um, I think we watched Volume 1 together also, so yeah, it's, we tend to view it yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> the, the thing I like most about his channel is the like, atmosphere he's able to craft through like his cadence mm. and his you know video editing and like the uh, background music he uses. Like it all just comes together so well to <clears throat> create like a like a really like unsettling feeling he definitely puts a lot of work into his edits he sometimes on his twitter account will like post screenshots of his editing software (laughs) please excuse the motorcycle gangs outside Um, we we live in downtown uh bangkok so it's a frequent i was gonna say we live in Japan, so basically every day is like Akira <laughs> here. I think that was Akira, I just went yeah. past. We that? live in Neo Tokyo. <laughs> um, but yeah, he sometimes posts uh, screenshots of his editing software, and uh, he certainly has a uh, very uh, complex uh, layers and wavelengths and things like that set up. Mm-hmm. So, but he's not super prolific in terms of his output, right? He and it puts like a video out every three or four months. So, so yeah, work goes his into each one. his <laughs> video before this latest one he posted this past week was released four months ago, and that one was a banger. Fear of the Deep. Right? Yeah, that was a great video. I think that was, well, that was one of my favorite, if not my favorite, videos by yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. Right, uh, really tapped into the subject material you know mm-hmm. what what lies beneath the right. the ocean right. and uh, it's such a primal fear too yeah i particularly like that he brought up uh junji ito in that video mm. oh he, yeah he did yeah <laughs> <laughs> which is a fairly popular manga artist overseas like the last time i was in london mm-hmm. Uh, the like local comic stores had a lot of Junji Eto stuff. I even found a Christmas jumper of Junji Eto <laughs> design. <laughs> That's insane. I will say the one unfortunate thing about Junji Eto's work is in its original manga form, it's truly disturbing. Yeah. Like it leaves, you know, like a strong impression on you. But every single time they try to adapt it to anime or like you know animation or live it, action, they also tried that. Yeah. It's always so lame. 
I don't think it it I don't think it translates to animation or like it has to be in its original form. I think right? so too. I can't yeah. imagine it being good in live it's, action either. It's a bit too crazy to work mm -hmm. in any other media. Mm -hmm. Also, um, there's something about looking at like a really upsetting still image, right? That yeah doesn't translate to full motion. I think it's his drawing style as well. Yeah, which has a really like creepy vibe mm -hmm. to it, which is. Uh, very difficult to adapt to any other media. Yeah. So several years ago, some animation studio did their their take on his work. Th there's like two, right? There's also a new one on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming you've seen the. Uh, the I've seen a few animation. of the new one, and I've seen most of the original yeah. one, and I've seen a few of the live action movies like Tommy A as well. So the original animation adaptation got a lot of flack from from bands for being like like cheaply made, like no detail in the animation, mm. like just not being on target, so to speak. And I don't know, I guess people had hopes for the for the newer Netflix series which dropped and was that this year or last yeah, year? Yeah, uh, beginning of this year, end of last year. I yeah. Think. yeah. So I watched it with a lot of anticipation, but it didn't really hold up either. No, it, no. It just felt kind of lame to me. It had a kind of like a bit of like comedy to it that didn't really work mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rather than going straight out like intense, disturbing. Right. Like most of his stuff is. Yeah, so I'm starting to have my doubts about any other potential future <laughs> adaptations from his work. And he's still releasing uh, graphic novels fr fairly frequently in Japan. He had one out like the last couple of months. Nice. So he's nice. got stuff coming out every few months. He kind of like churns it out like quite fast, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. In my opinion, the most like interesting point about that guy is how like mild mannered he seems in real life <laughs> <laughs> like have you seen that i think i showed you before that meme that it shows like his work this is like i forgot what it said it's like junji ito's like work or like mind or something and it shows something from one of his manga and then the next panel it says like Junji Ito, the person, and it's like him, like with a little cute, like cat hat on, like holding a cat. Or he something. loves cats, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some creepy people like cats too. So yeah, yeah. I'm sure a lot of them do. <laughs> Doesn't uh, Minakami Haruki also love cats or something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. <laughs> do you did you like know his? kind of childhood trauma that kind of set him off on this like horror spree in terms of like his dark imagination no no uh, I read an interview with him and he grew up in the Japanese countryside and he actually had like how do you say in the US you have the toilet outside of the house outhouse the outhouse yeah which I didn't think was a thing in Japan I've never really heard that as a Japanese thing before having a toilet outside um, but the house he grew up in which I think might have been his grandparents house the toilet was located in like an underground tunnel underneath their house so you had to go like underground okay so yeah th this is how you fuck up someone for life right <laughs> <laughs> or make them an incredibly successful mangal artist <laughs> And he had to like go through this like like tunnel that was actually made out of the dirt. So you said you could see like the roots of like plants in it and things. And it was like very dark. And they had these specific uh, insects in there that are like uh, only in Japan. Mm -hmm. And the way he described them is they are like the most like freaky insects you can imagine. They have like very long legs and they like shake uh, and make some weird sound yeah, yeah. And, 
uh, he said that like fucked him up so much that he created <laughs> this like dark visions in his brain, and that's where all of his work stems from. Just that one insect in that dark toilet tunnel that he grew up in. That's crazy, though. I, I can, but I, I, I can see how explains a lot. I think. Yeah. You know, and like sometimes like tiny singular events can like really. Yeah. Like seep into everything yeah. else in your life. But also, no, that's I don't think that's the only reason. Like he also has like a, a very vivid imagination and an incredibly strong artistic talent and mm -hmm. storytelling, drawing ability right. that are right. probably inherent. So, uh, but that one, like, I mean, he should thank that insect to be honest. I mean, that, <laughs> <laughs> that pulled out all his his talent and mm -hmm. ability. But if you look at a lot of his like really freaky characters, they do have like abnormally long limbs mm -hmm. sometimes so i think that is like a direct influence of that that insect yeah there's definitely body horror elements to yeah to his work uh the one that nespa actually used in the video is like one of his better stories i think do you know that the one that he used like the sea like giant sea creature i know the story the but beach. i've never yeah. personally read it it's only like 10 pages mm. long it's like a short story yeah but the idea is very strong, I think, behind it. Very disturbing idea. Like, mm -hmm. uh, these people are trapped inside this, like, giant sea worm thing. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, there's, like, hundreds of people in there. And they're still alive. And they live off the digestive system of the animal. And, like, its body is, like, translucent. So they're, like living in this, in the sea, like, deep sea. And they can see everything else through the the creature it's like a little aquarium <laughs> right it's like last week's iron lung but it's transparent you know so you can <laughs> see all these it's like, like a totally giant different kind of horror yeah sea monsters yeah. yeah but the idea is very powerful i think very strong right mm -hmm. so um yeah so that's the one nespo used in the the video yeah what did you think of the the new one overall the new nespo video it was good um <clears throat> the so again like the concept for this recent video was about different like lost media yeah uh like like upsetting or like disturbing or you know mm. weird things that have for a fact been recorded mm. but have either been like lost somehow mm -hmm. and like, cannot be found or deliberately locked up and kept away from the public right right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'll just forgotten in time i guess right. one but example he gave was actually a very famous story that occurred in germany about a well i guess to give some background there was a like an online forum in like the like late 90s early 2000s i guess yeah where like people a, could meet up to the talk about like cannibalism fetishes or like dark fetishes basically yeah. yeah and there happened to be one member on that forum who actually was uh, like a legit cannibal <laughs> <laughs> and through his posts and like his um advertisements i guess is like crate list posts yeah. right and, uh, you know offers to yeah he um, found a like willing participant he found someone who was willing to be eaten <laughs> <laughs> so long story short uh spoilers he, that person was eaten <laughs> i don't think they're spoilers to right. be <laughs> and <laughs> From a legal perspective, it's it's interesting because apparently it was kind of a difficult case in the eyes of the law because technically no laws were broken or like it mm, could be yeah. argued that. Uh, consent in adult. Right, yeah. yeah. Though inevitably that guy got like a lot of time in jail. I guess a loophole because like can you if you consent to being murdered mm -hmm. is it a murder but the act of murder is still illegal right right so 
but these cases are so are such outliers that right. like why would you even make a law for that? Like, yeah, I was reading online that actually that particular case is studied in law school. <laughs> that, that doesn't that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. You know, it's, as I said, an outlier case. Yeah, right? yeah. So you know things that can happen that are mm-hmm. very difficult to process through laws mm-hmm. that are already in existence. So yeah. So the reason why that wasn't included in his video is because there supposedly is like footage that this cannibal guy recorded himself like doing everything from start to finish. (laughs) (laughs) And somewhere like some some group of authorities have it (laughs) locked up. Yeah. I, I highly doubt that I'll ever see the light of day. Well, it's Unless we have like some apocalypse or something and someone like in that situation like finds that tape and watches it. <laughs> right. Like I'm thinking like I just like the road, but in Germany. And like some like dad and son like wander into like a like a torn up like police station and I like, could imagine just some very disgruntled like police officer who like hates Germany just sells it to a TV network or something <laughs> and they just broadcast it or something. That sounds very black mirror. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what was interesting about that one is that it kinda linked to the other tape. So we were both aware of the the German cannibal one. But Yeah, the, yeah. I first heard about that story like I'd heard about it. A decade or two ago. Probably the, 20 years ago. The other serial case, serial killer case you hadn't heard of, right? Tape 3. I Refresh think. my memory. It was about the two guys, one like Vietnamese guy and the other guy who was oh, like building a nuclear bunker right. in his I'd, house. I'd never heard of that one. So I'd heard of that one, mm-hmm. but I'd only heard of it through a similar channel to Nesbo. Mm-hmm. But what's so crazy about it, that is, is that that really should be one of the more famous serial killer cases in the US like it's as crazy as Bundy or Dharma or Gracie Gacy right yeah and also it's a double team as well it's two guys doing it together yeah let me stop you right there for a second um it's always kind of boggled my mind or it's been strange to me how at least in the US, like some like heinous crimes will reach like legendary status, you know, Mm. like Charles Manson, Ted Bundy, like that kind of thing. But then there are like other just as heinous crimes or like just as like outlandish that end up like never catching on at all. And like, like, the cultural discourse Mm. those in a way are like the could it could be argued that those are more fucked up (laughs) right (laughs) like something so fucked up happened yet it's not even talked about right yeah kind of makes you think like because bundy gacy dharma they all kind of happen in the same era Mm -hmm. as well so it sounded like in america at that time there was this like huge like plethora or movement of serial killers and now they just don't exist we never hear about serial killers mm. but surely they do ex- continue to exist right so so i occasionally listen to you know tom segura the yeah, comedian comedian yeah. Mm. yeah he has a podcast with his wife and something he often does on his podcast is he'll just like antagonize her like things that like really bother her he'll like like dial up to 11 and like apparently one thing that like she doesn't really like is like hearing about like really heinous like serial killer stuff (laughs) so on on their podcast he'll often not anymore but in the past he would like have these segments where he would go into great detail about like like really messed up like serial killer or like murder cases like some of them quite recent (laughs) just to like get on his wife's nerves and i gotta say a lot of them like i'd never heard of and they're really messed up oh they don't they get any meter attention at all right yeah 
Yeah, that's what resonated me with the the lost media tape. Is that it was kind of crazy that you never heard of that, but then I only heard of that for a, for another channel. Mm -hmm. So, like, how many of these cases are completely invisible to everyone? You know, right? It's kind of ignorance is bliss, right? If we don't know what's going on, but it's what the media chooses to report. On. Yeah, whatever catches on at the time. But the general public will get a sense like, oh, you know, serial killers are not a problem anymore. Like, that thing doesn't really exist anymore. Mm. High school shootings are a much bigger problem or something, you know, because, like, how the media report these things. Of course, they are a big problem, but, you know, it's interesting how much power they have about how we perceive what's going on in society, right? They have that power. That's very interesting. So you you could argue that, like, <laughs> like school shootings or mass shootings, are the serial killers of today. Yeah, yeah the serial killers <laughs> of the two thousands and twenty tens. Technically, they are serial killers, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Although I thought to be a serial killer, you had to like do like not connected events of killing. If you just kill people at one time, that's a masculine, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Think about it for a second. When you hear about like a like a mass shooting, it, it's a horrible event, and you know, like it, it'll weigh on you to think about it a lot. Though, hearing about like a serial killer who statistically speaking maybe has killed way less people than a mass shooter yeah right, yeah but you know more methodically over a long period of time hearing about those stories leaves a way different impression on you yeah it can do yeah yeah, yeah. like in both cases people are dying yeah in both cases it's murder yeah but one feels you know like more intense uniquely mm -hmm. disgusting yeah yeah Whereas the other one, also, you know, horrible, but more tra tragic versus disgusting. Like Sa Sam Harris has talked like, about this. Like d twisted versus, I don't know. Have you listened to Sam Harris before? No, but... He's talked about, like, if you open a news website and mm -hmm. there's a story where 8,000 people died in an earthquake, mm -hmm. or one person has been kidnapped... And they might be in a basement somewhere. Mm -hmm. and people will gravitate to the story about one person. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. just look at the news recently. Like, like the five people who died in the submarine, right? But there are hundreds of people right, dying. Probably more people yeah. died in the like one day in Chicago, in, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah or, or, or in the like, in Russia the... Ukraine situation <laughs> in the same amount of time. A neighborhood in LA. <laughs> exactly. Five people from yeah. shot. So. Yeah. Yeah. But we are, like, as humans, more able to emotionally connect to the suffering of one person mm -hmm. than, like, 50 people being shot in, like, 10 minutes or something. Yeah. You know? It's true. And that's just how our brains work. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, also, I thought the... Did you know that Nespo had to, like, take down the video? I saw that, yeah. So... Something in the beginning of his original upload. Which have been the tornado tape. Tape one. Copyright said. struck. Yeah. Yeah. I saw his message about it. He tried to reach some kind of conclusion with the person who claimed the, vid the video, but um, nothing could be, like no agreement could be reached. So he just had to like re-upload it mm. and alter the entire first section. Do you think that would have been like a clip from like a, a news channel or something like that? He did use a few of those. Yeah. <sighs> Probably. Because yeah. I'm assuming like the the footage from the car he got, he would have got permission from that guy to use that, mm. I'm guessing, right? Yeah, you would think like any footage he used, he'd be, he would have like double checked everything in terms of whether yeah. or not it's okay to use so whatever it was i'm sure it was a very surprising thing something you didn't 
expect to happen at all. He said he like improved the first tape, and I checked today after he'd re-uploaded it, and he had like three hundred thousand views in like twelve hours yeah, since he yeah. re-uploaded it. So, but you would assume that everyone is not going to like re-click on it or re-watch it that originally watched it. So, would it affect him quite badly in terms of the money that he makes off that video? Yeah, it would. Um, he would lose money, I'm sure, right? For a couple of different factors. One, you know, when uh, like pretty popular channel releases a video, like the vast major- majority of their views come within the first 24 hours or so. So a lot of the people that were going to watch the video had already watched it. And then the video was, you know, scrubbed. Secondly, when those videos on YouTube get claimed, I believe how it works is like any money that they were entitled to goes to the person who made the claim. Okay. (laughs) So like hypothetically, if a local news station claimed that video, then they would be getting that money. Mm. Like, like siphoning, you know, his ad revenue. Unless he removes it, right? Uh, oh right 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 yeah which is i guess what he did yeah Mm. i think there's a certain amount of time that has to pass for them to claim that or something like that Uh, is that maybe that's how it works yeah i'm not sure exactly but uh someone who had my own youtube channel for a while i I got quite a lot of copyright claims Mm -hmm. one very strange one by the way really so uh, we have both used pixabay.com, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, which is a image and video copyright free source. Mm-hmm. You don't even need to have an account to use it. Uh, the only reason to have an account is to like not prove that you're a robot every time you download mm-hmm. something uh, yeah, from yeah. it. Um, but I used a like very abstract video clip that was just like some like CG smoke, like a black background, mm-hmm. and. I got like a copyright violation from somewhere like Eastern Europe, like Slovakia or somewhere like that. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> and <laughs> I managed to trace it down to who it was. <laughs> and it was like a rapper in like Slovakia. And he'd used the same copyright free clip in a music video he'd made. And then the record company that he was with tried to claim it as copyright infringement that I'd used mm. it. But it was a copyright free video. So what I did was I disputed it and then add, added the link where I got it yeah. for YouTube and it disappeared like a month later. Basically. Yeah. yeah. I heard that recently some uh, person got into legal trouble for like falsely claiming like over many years, like millions of dollars worth of uh, content on YouTube. And it, it, it's really scummy how, how low those content violation, uh, content claim people will go mm. to yeah. just like take advantage of the system. Like they will, for example, like on on Spotify, for example, just upload like really short tracks with certain like sound effects or something from like TikTok or somewhere and publish them as like their music. So then in the future, like after that point, if anyone on YouTube uses that same music, that they found on TikTok as well, which is fair game, I guess. Um, the scammer person who had uploaded stuff on Spotify will claim those videos and saying, like, look, I have music that's in my name that has this. So, <laughs> so just trying to use copyright or to scam people out. Yeah. Me, basically. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. I'd imagine that's how like 90% of that whole um, content 
claim ecosystem works these days. It's all just bullshit. Pretty lazy way to make money, but yeah. make money. But yep. There you go. Yep. So you'd uh, recommend the last Nespo video to people? I and recommend all of them. Yeah. His whole channel. Yeah. With his channel, it's kind of impressive how f- like quickly the the level of the videos improved. If you look at some of his earlier videos, they're uh, like a lot more kind of amateur. But his like last couple of years videos are very consistent quality. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell he started taking it more seriously at some point. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite videos is his Gemini Home Entertainment video. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that one yet. So, Gemini, this is very long, right? It's about a three and a half hour video. Yeah. And what it is is a analysis of every video uploaded by another account, mm-hmm. another YouTuber which was the Gemini Home Entertainment, like analog horror channel. Mm -hmm. And this guy who made like a series of videos that are all connected to a mystery of like an alien invasion happening. So you have like nature videos. He built like a whole video game uh, based around it. There's videos about like a camping site. and It was kind of a while ago I watched it, but... What really stuck out to me was the music that he used. Mm-hmm. So he used a lot of like '90s Weather Channel music, and oh, like yeah, very elevator style like jazz music. Those or, are my jams. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that and uh, and vaporwave. Kind of like vaporwave a little bit. Mm, that yeah. puts me in my happy place. <laughs> And for some reason, like every few months, I get like drawn back to just listening to that music. And as we live in Japan, like I often have uh, times where I have to walk through very dark, empty streets in some smaller cities around. And because Japan is cramped and depopulated. <laughs> <laughs> And for some reason, I find that music like very haunting a little bit in those environments. Well, for sure, yeah. You know, Nespo talks about liminal spaces before, and there's something about like being in a completely deserted street in the middle of nowhere in Japan, with, like lights on in the houses either side, mm-hmm. and then listen to this like very kind of like daytime, like happy kind of music in that completely contrasting environment right so. right <laughs> oh that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> so occasionally I have that experience yeah mm. <laughs> yeah I think a country like this is the place to have that experience yeah <laughs> mm. but yeah to our listeners I recommend checking it out like you can actually watch the original channel uh, Gemini, it's called like Gemini Home Entertainment. You can watch Nespo's video, or you can actually listen to. Some people made a playlist of all the music that he used hmm. for the videos. So cool. Occasionally, I go through the playlist. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't checked that one yet. That one out yet. You should. I I made like a night of it. So. <laughs> it's a long video, right? Yeah, it's over three hours. Yeah. yeah. But I did it in one go. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those videos where like he analyzes tape after tape after tape, but you're kind of. Become, you're kind of coming to an overall conclusion mm-hmm. so it's kind of like watching like levels of a video game like finally revealing like some end, yeah. Yeah. end truth kind of thing yeah one of his best ones I think yeah. but he obviously had a he kind of pretends like it's real like it's not a YouTube channel like these videos just mysteriously started appearing on the mm. internet so obviously he had a kind of collaboration with that channel I think yeah, yeah to yeah. promote it or something I mean you gotta have a little bit of fun with it. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still works though. Mm. Yeah. So, have you uh, got anything you want to bring up this week? So, I read a news headline earlier this week, a couple of days ago, that like kind of reading the news. What are you doing? What are you doing that for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like sent me into a dark place. So, this is from Newsweek, and. 
It was published uh, a couple days ago. Uh, the title of this article is Videos of Titan Submersible Implosion and Screams Flood Social Media. Jesus, I didn't even know about this when I was following that story, but like the second I found out about the end of it, I kind of just stopped paying attention to the right. story. So, so is this uh, real? Spoilers, no, it's not real. <laughs> Basically, people on social media, like on TikTok, they are like faking videos. I mean, it'd be so easy to fake, right? It'd be right. so easy to make. Right. You know? yeah. There wouldn't be screams because you would die in like 0 0.1 second, right? Right. Yeah. So, again, from the article, videos purporting to reveal audio footage of the Titan submersible imploding and screams from within the vessel have proliferated across social media platform TikTok prompting concerns about the spread of disinformation about the tragedy. So it goes on to talk about, yeah, people are just like making bullshit videos um, to what, like get like abuse. internet clout abuse on, yeah, uh, like faking the, f faking the death throes the the death cries of people death cries <laughs> <laughs> right i think this is the very definition of a uh, bit too soon guys <laughs> yeah i mean it's pretty fucked yeah. up that is that is fucked up it's pretty yeah. dark yeah well it shows people do anything for views right like, right like it's like a 19 year old boy dying in there like seriously but. Right. this is this is the point that our society is at right now yeah. with like oh well, it can go lower i think like yeah. getting the social media likes and, and the we're views not, we're not as deep as ocean gate yet we can go lower i think <laughs> 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 maybe we're all we're all implode in <laughs> screams of agony at some point yeah <laughs> have you uh listened to any of these recordings or? no i haven't do you want to listen or is that uh given a platform to these these people i did see a play button on the video on the screen uh, that play button was that for the worked. article. Okay, the article. Yeah, I guess they're not gonna uh, share it. Yeah, I'm interested. It is unclear what steps, if any, TikTok have taken to stop the flow of such videos. Would I they don't take think any steps? TikTok gives a fuck. They won't get involved. <laughs> <don't they? laughs> I think as long as people are like accessing their service, they're they're a okay. They won't get involved in that, but last week, uh, YouTube permanently banned Troma's channel from YouTube. What? Permanently banned it. Really? Yep. Why? Because the movies or trailers are unproblematic. They, I don't know. Do they objectify women? Do you want to look it up? Or? That's insane. Hold yeah. on. So Lloyd Kaufman was in a Twitter fight with YouTube. There you go. Uh, if our listeners don't know, Troma is the studio behind such classics as Toxic Avenger, Mr. Kabuki Man, uh, Poultry Geist. <laughs> That's right, Poultry Geist. Can't forget Nuke that one. Nukem High. <laughs> oh, yeah, Nukem High. Amongst I forgot others. about that. Is YouTube just realizing that their videos are a little bit on PC? <laughs> I'm looking at this article. This is from filmthreat.com. Film threat. This was posted in 2020. Uh, no, they they might have been like kicked off before and put back on, but they were permanently banned uh, this month. Hmm. Let's see. 2020. Oh yeah, six days ago on Reddit, uh, trauma channel banned by YouTube without warning. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman on Twitter: We had over a half a million subscribers. Fifty years of our art has been stolen. Not just trauma team, but others. Yep. 
We need a pro bono lawyer. <laughs> Our contingency lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you need a lawyer like that, you're in the wrong era. Like that'd be an eighties kind of lawyer <laughs> that you would need. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at his uh, his Twitter <laughs> icon, it's it's Lloyd Kaufman with, with a mask on with a big old hole cut out of it, so his nose is sticking out <laughs> with a kind of like a shocked, like half shocked, half concerned gaze uh, on his face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, oh, something went wrong. So has he been? So removed from Twitter. How does he only have eight hundred and ninety-one? Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, he's following eight hundred ninety-one. Yeah, so uh, fifty-four thousand followers. Yeah. Yeah. That still seems a little low for something like for someone like him. It does seem a little low. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Have you checked out the new Threads yet? The new Threads. You know Threads. The like extremely disturbing BBC nuclear <laughs> holocaust movie <laughs> <laughs> n- n- not, not quite not, not quite no. <laughs> so, so I would oh, recommend that but don't watch that so. I guess you haven't heard <laughs> so this past week like just a couple of days ago just really suddenly um, Meta like the, the Facebook Instagram company they like really like out of the blue launched a basically like a twitter clone service okay it's basically like twitter but owned by new social media platform meta yeah and when you log on for the first time basically it'll just like use your information from your instagram account and it's basically twitter but run by mark zuckerberg <laughs> <laughs> just what we need yeah, yeah and that's called threads <laughs> and threads interesting threads. yeah and in response to the launch apparently elon musk is looking into like suing meta for stealing trade secrets hmm. because apparently like after twitter laid off a bunch of staff facebook or sorry meta came Hi. in you know, and grabbed them all and started mm. developing their own like micro blogging service. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they need another company where they can sleep six hours a day and, yeah. <laughs> and get paid 80 grand a year. <laughs> so, supposedly, in just over the course of like three days, like 70 million people signed up for Threads accounts. So, it's already like fucking huge <laughs> well i i'm not even heard of it yeah to check you know, it out so, yeah like it's an, it's an unfortunate name if you know the movie threads <laughs> <laughs> yeah the first time like my first time hearing it like i was thinking was well is that is that like a like an online clothing shop or that's something? what it sounds like yeah 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 uh, that's what it means doesn't it like threads. cool clothes or something yeah yeah okay yeah so I I, I I made an account two days ago. Made an account? Yeah. Well, basically, technically, I guess I already had one since I had an Instagram account. I just downloaded the app. So wait, if you have an Instagram account, you already have a Threads account. It it's like you have one, but it just needs to be activated. Like when I downloaded Threads, it had my Instagram username there and my my name already there and it just all i had to do was hit like accept on the user agreement there's something kind of a little bit a little bit wrong with that i think right oh yeah <laughs> it's like yeah. i ate a big mac once we already have a mcdonald's like application account now no I don't <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you just need to activate it <laughs> yeah it's very dystopian <laughs> I agree. <laughs> People have like posted screenshots of. I don't. I only want to have an account if I make an account, right? You know how like on on the Apple App Store, sorry, the Apple App Store. Before you download an app, it'll show you like all the things that the app has access to. Like it'll say like, oh, this app has access to your microphone, your camera, mm. your, your contacts, right? 
So apparently the Threads app like has access to like fucking everything. <laughs> <laughs> like you can see everything if you install it. Like the list is like a mile long. <laughs> well, and that's the world we live in. The screw mark is like a memory. <laughs> Damn him. So, yeah, I I downloaded it, and I I downloaded it thinking I was gonna be like really early to the service, but again I was like a day or two late, and by the time I downloaded it, like there were so many users like already on it, like mm. posting like they were veterans and like veterans. I'm, I didn't even know it existed until you just said it. Uh, veterans veterans how can it be veterans or like like I don't... social media veterans yeah, i know what it means but how how do they exist if i that i don't even know this exists until you just said right it. that's <laughs> what i'm saying like i was like shocked i'll give like, you a veteran of something right like people were like posting with like the with the uh what's the word with the air of like oh i've done thing. this for years kind of yeah, thing, right? yeah yeah okay like uh like fucking like new york times had an account cnn like all the big news channels oh, already had an account of course they do so. yeah like uh trent reznor had an account <laughs> <laughs> david bowie had an account <laughs> david bowie <laughs> yeah <laughs> john lennon like it was fucking like john everybody. lennon has an account yeah well his estate has an account it's, it's, oh, okay yeah. <laughs> but you know you know what i mean like like it had like the feeling that like it's been a service that's been running for like a long ass time. Like yeah. usually things like that come a little bit later, you know. If you died and your your estate made a social media account with your name on it, like, what, what would you think about that? Obviously, you wouldn't know about it. You'd you'd be dead. But do you think that's kind of weird? Yeah, Alex. Hey guys, what's going it's on? fucked up. <laughs> this would be a, a great point of conversation. This could go down several different paths. It's gonna be a four-hour podcast. I think we go down that route. But, yeah, yeah. Let's save it for next time because I, I would love to discuss that. The whole idea of like digital legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Well, that's time. coming soon. Like uh, holograms of like Michael Jackson performing at concerts and things. Yeah. That's 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 coming, isn't it? So let's save it for next time <laughs> that's like a whole like treasure chest of awesome discussion topics <laughs> should we uh should we sign off there ah uh, uh, everyone see. has a uh episode three preview i guess yeah uh, we've been going cool. for like about 50 minutes yeah i guess we can sign off it's pretty good length yeah, yeah. all right yeah uh david thank you very much always a pleasure never a chore uh, to everyone who has a Threads account, uh, please let us know how, how it's going. Yeah. How them threads? How them threads fit? <laughs> <laughs> and if you're listening, Trent, also let us know how <laughs> our threads is. <laughs> hey, Trent. Hey, buddy. <laughs> if you want to come on anytime, we're we're game. Yeah, just let let us know. Uh, like a you know. Maybe a couple of weeks in advance. I think yeah. we can we can do the airline ticket. Yeah, we can. I, th- I think we can. We can pull our resources. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if we can go business. So we can premium economy. If we push it, <sighs> we got credit cards. I think so we can manage that. Yeah, I can do like a six month credit card thing. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, um, if you guys like, uh, you know, give us something our way for listening, then uh, we can maybe bump Trent up to. Uh, business yeah. oh right yeah if you subscribe to our patreon we can a patron that is pay for uh, trent resner's a coach class ticket totally gonna be made at some point but yeah. uh this is this quite yet but once it is we will have the trent resner airplane ticket fund so yes up. yes yeah. and any any extra funds that come in past you know the cost of the airfare we'll spend on Beer, yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, I think, like, let's find the chair so we can sit down. I think Trent's getting enough from the business ticket, isn't he? Yeah, you're 
Yamazaki. We can get him a bottle of Yamazaki or something. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to drink it too. With him, so yeah. He's not going to get the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Trent, you're, so we're offering you maybe a business ticket and like a third of a bottle of Yamazaki whiskey, which is very hard to get. So it's a pretty good offer, I think. Yeah. This does yeah. not include airfare home, though. This is one way. One way. Yeah. Also, like any incidental taxis you need while you're here, that's. You know, there are ships. Ships still exist. Yeah. Across the seas, don't they? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just, uh, he he. If he has some time in the, what do you call it? The stove. The bowels of the boat. He can spend some time there. <laughs> <laughs> practicing his next album or coming up with ideas say, yeah, a like liminal space for inspiration crossing yeah. the Pacific in, in in the hull of a boat would yeah. probably result in a really interesting new Nine Inch Nails album and we can uh, <laughs> definitely bankroll like a case of Nicker Black he can take with him on that boat so nice yeah that'll give him get him tripping yeah that ship yeah <laughs> <laughs> And no one please record his screams or his implosion <laughs> and put it on TikTok <laughs> or threads or whatever the hell that is. <laughs> or do. <laughs> Nothing we will say will stop you. So. <laughs> All right, Alex. All right, thank you. I'll thank see you, you next time. See you.